MATV is pleased to have Bill Savitt, partner with Wachtell, Lipton, Rosen, and Katz. Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Tell us about your company. Wachtell, Lipton, Rosen, and Katz is a New York-based law firm. Well, we have one office right here in Manhattan, uh, and we have a particular focus on mergers and acquisitions, corporate governance, and other corporate-related transactional work. And what makes your firm stand out? We are very small and very focused on delivering top quality transactional work in a, in a very focused and expert way. Has or will the proliferation of class action lawsuits against corporations really become de facto regulation in your opinion? I think it has. It's, it's not conventional to think of litigation as regulation, but, but really it is. It's, it was said that, that war is diplomacy by other means. Litigation is regulation by other means. It's just organized by private plaintiffs hauling folks into court and trying to get judgments to compel their conduct. And over the past 15 years, uh, the M&A market has been very heavily policed and very heavily regulated by private plaintiffs bringing class action litigation in order to enforce and increasingly define the fiduciary duties of corporate directors. And the result of that has been over the course of a generation, a, a new and rich body of law, mostly coming out of the courts of Delaware, but from the courts of other states as well, that has defined the disclosure obligations of directors in, in connection with corporate transactions, the requirements of the stockholder franchise in connection with contested director elections and corporate transactions, the boundaries of the duty of loyalty, and the appropriate conduct of different sorts of going private transactions. All in all, the class action litigation device has operated to reshape the common law of corporations and I think has had a really profound effect on the way that directors and corporations go about the business of transacting. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, let's stay with um, activist investing for a while. Um, what significant impact do you think that has had on M&A? Well, over the same period of time, the past 10 plus years, the, the corporate governance landscape has been deeply affected by the emergence of, of, of stockholders who call themselves activist investors. Uh, some of these activist investors are the same folks who called themselves corporate raiders back in the 80s. It's not an entirely new phenomenon, but it's one that has changed the relationship between companies and shareholders in the, the in communities in which they operate. There's been a great deal of debate of the activist investor phenomenon, some criticism of it. Like everything else, there are, there are good parts and bad parts. What I, what I think can be said is that the, the call of the activist investor for immediate returns is one that puts a great deal of pressure on the historical mission of corporations and the historical job of the directors who are stewards for those corporations, which is to deliver long-term value and social growth that will redound not just to the benefit of stockholders but to society and communities at large. And navigating those tensions I think will be the real challenge of lawyers, judges, and regulators dealing with activism over the coming years. Okay, now let's get into the subject more of litigation. Let's talk about investment banks and litigation there. Well, this is a much more recent phenomenon. Over the past number of years as the Delaware courts and the courts of the states have refined and shaped their law of disclosure and their law of fiduciary duties, many of those disputed principles have reached a steady state. But in the past year, there have been a series of decisions in which the courts have found investment bankers and other advisors liable for aiding and abetting the breaches of directors' fiduciary duties. And this is a brave new world. It's a new front in the area of potential litigation exposure and, in a sense, the use of litigation as a regulatory tool because what we're seeing is the state law of corporations used as a means to regulate investment advisor conduct. Uh, there's an important decision on appeal in the Delaware Supreme Court in a case called Rural Metro, which we expect to have a decision on in, 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 the, coming, in the coming weeks or months. It will help to frame this issue, but the broader lesson, I think, is that those who advise boards of directors, and particularly investment advisors, need to take account of the real potential for the regulatory scheme that, has, that is litigation to, to, to reach their work and to regulate and shape their conduct. So we have to be more cautious moving forward. Certainly cognizant of the legal environment. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. You've given us tremendous insight. Thank you so much. Real Bill. pleasure.